Now let's jump into some MIDI basics in Traction Waveform. And I'm using Waveform Free for this, so what I'm going to show you here will also work in Waveform Pro. Now there's a few ways that we can work with MIDI. We can draw the notes into a piano roll, we can record them in using a MIDI keyboard, and we can also use a step sequencer. And I'm going to show you how we can do all three of those things. It's just the very basics of MIDI to help get you started. Now, the first thing to talk about is our actual tracks. In some DAWs, you have to create an instrument track or a MIDI track. In waveform, all tracks are the same. It just matters what you put onto those tracks. So let's create a new track here just by clicking that little plus sign and then add track. I'm going to rename it by right clicking, then hit rename. We'll call this synth. And now we have this synth track and this could record audio into it or we could work with MIDI on there. So what I'm going to do is just add a MIDI clip onto here. This is just an empty MIDI clip. And I did that by dragging this plus sign, the red plus sign down there. And then when I let go, I have some options. So I'm going to insert MIDI clip. Now I have that MIDI clip and I'm just going to double click on this to make that bigger. And you can see it's created this MIDI clip. That's only one bar. If we want to extend this, there's arrows at the side. I'll just zoom in and I'm doing that with the wheel on my mouse. So you can see these arrows here. I can click and drag that however long I want. But what I want to show you right here is that I can draw a note in here, say draw that there, one here, one here, and I'm just going to solo this track. And this is what MIDI sounds like. Nothing. There's no audio in MIDI. It's just digital data. And that digital data tells waveform what notes to play in a virtual instrument. So what we have to do is add a virtual instrument. And if we go over to the side here, you can see this little plus sign. We'll hit that. And I'm just going to show you a virtual instrument that comes with waveform free. So we go to waveform instruments and this for OSC is actually a really decent free synthesizer that comes with waveform. And here it is here. Now, let's play this back. It's very basic, yes, but I just wanted to show you we have some sound in there now. And if you go up, you can see these two arrows up here. If we click in there, this is all the presets for this for OSC synth. So if we want to change it to maybe, I don't know, something different in here. Let's change it to flute. Doesn't really sound like a flute. I think that we have the octaves off for flute notes. So I'm just going to close down the user interface there. If I double click on this clip, which I'll do, it opens up the more expanded piano roll that has more options. And one of those options is to transpose. So if I click down here, Let's say I want to go a whole octave down. I can do that by clicking there. And now it sounds like a deeper synth flute, I guess. This really isn't what I want for this track. None of this really goes with the song. So I just click on those and then I hit delete on my computer keyboard. You could also right click and then hit delete. There's other ways, but I like to just use the delete on my computer keyboard. All right, so we have this clip here and we have our little bit of a song that we're coming up with. It's nothing special. Sounds like a mess at the moment, but that's fine. We just want to add a little bit of synth in there. Maybe that will make it sound better. So I'm going to double click on the MIDI clip and I know my song starts with a G. I'm going to find a different sound for this. Click up there. Let's do an organ. We'll hear how that sounds now. Sure, that works for me. Let's just click in here. And we have a note. And my notes last for two bars. So I'm going to hover over the edge of this note. Click and drag. 
zoom out a bit. There, I'll drag it to there. Again, nothing special. I'm just kind of playing around here, but we need to make this bigger because we need to go to our next note. So I'm going to click and drag that. You can see, I have some notes that I've accidentally clicked in there. I will delete those. All right. And now I'll double click again, go into our piano roll. And this time I need to add a C. Now we'll start there. And it remembers the length of your previous note that you had. So this one went the full length that I needed. And then I'm going to add an A. And if it's in the wrong spot, you can see when you hover over it, you got those four arrows. We can drag it wherever we want. There. All right, let's hear what this sounds like now. I'm going to add that distortion back to the guitar. All right, let's listen to what this sounds like now. All right, nothing special, just kind of playing around with this right now. I want to go back here. And if you notice at the bottom here, we have velocity. If you click on that, you'll see these are the velocities of the notes. So if I was playing this on a keyboard, the velocities would be different for every note I hit. So you might want to adjust these to give it a more human sort of feeling. And we'll just click on this note here. And then you can click and drag those velocities however you want. I'm going to change to this arrow and then I can click here and adjust the velocity. I can click here, adjust that velocity, whatever one we want. So the pencil tool is for drawing in. This one helps to just adjust things around if we wanted. Now that's just the very basics of drawing some notes in. What if we want to record some notes in? And I have my MIDI keyboard here, but what if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, but you'd still like that feeling of recording a keyboard in? Well, you can do that with your computer keyboard. And if you have this bottom properties window open like this, let's just minimize it. And you can click on this little keyboard logo at the bottom here or icon. And then we have our MIDI typing window that pops up. You're not going to be playing anything just by having this open. You have to press shift lock or caps lock, whatever it's called on your computer keyboard. And once we do that now, you can see the A, S, all of these keys here that shows on the screen, those are controlling our synth. And we can actually record this if we want. So I will just arm this track for recording and now I'll hit record. All right, so that was very easy to do. In my opinion, a lot easier to do it that way than drawing every note in. You'll notice that my octave was a little high for what I would like, and you can control the octave by using the Z and the X keys. So X up goes up an octave and Z goes down an octave, which is what I'm going to do right now. And we'll listen to that. That's a little bit better, but I've already recorded so what I'm going to need to do is go to transpose and we'll go down an octave. There, that's all right, right there. But if we zoom in a little more, you'll notice that it was off on the beginning of some of these. So what I might want to do is just zoom out again. I'm going to click and select all my clips here, and then I'm going to go to quantize. And I want to quantize the start times to, let's say, the 
quarter beat, the nearest quarter beat. And you'll notice it's moved my start time. So let's just have a look at those. Well, well, some of them I must have been really off because it's moved them to the next. So I'll just have to click and drag that over manually, which is fine. This one again, click and drag it over. All right. And of course, if I wasn't just messing around in here, I could do that a lot better and it would be closer, but that's just the basics of quantize, transpose, using your computer keyboard as a MIDI controller. And that was really easy to do. It's super quick to just record a quick line in there if you want. So let's just leave that in there, but I'm going to lower the levels. All right, that's fine right there. Now, what about if I wanted to add some drums? So I have this drum track up here. It has the micro drum sampler that comes with Waveform Free. If you don't have that loaded on there, you would just click the plus sign, go to Waveform, Instruments, and then you can find the micro drum sampler right there. Click it to add it. Gonna move that out and I'm actually going to turn caps lock off because right now what we're going to look at is using the sequencer. So for this, we need to load one of the presets and I'm not sure if all of these presets come with waveform free. It's showing that it's in here, but I do have waveform pro as well. So these might be holdovers from that. However, I do have this set to just show what's available in waveform free. So these might be available in there for you. I'm going to go just with this micro 909 because I know that's available everywhere. And it's not going to fit this track whatsoever, but it's what I have that everybody's going to have. So it's an easy way to show you what we can do. And this is like a drum machine. And we have these pads here. Each pad controls a different drum. So here we have kick, snare, snare two, but there's nothing there. So we have all of our drums in there. And I'm going to minimize that now. I'm going to min minimize that track, maximize our drum track. And this time I'm going to click and drag this down over to here, let go. And this time I want insert step clip. And you can also do this by just clicking right click and then insert step clip. It's that easy. All right. And I'm going to drag that there. We're going to double click on that. And you'll notice this looks different from our piano roll. That's because this is our step sequencer now. And I like to use this for drums and it even names our drums because this is a waveform plugin. It might not do that for every plugin. So don't think it's just going to magically name everything for you, but we have kick. So we'll go kick and then maybe I'll put a snare here. Let's see what that sounds like. I'll we'll put it back here. Now I need to make this bigger. So I'll just click and drag that to make it bigger. And one of the cool things is it will just repeat if you want it to, you don't have to have it repeat that but it will repeat by default, whatever you already have in there. And that could help make things quicker, but if you want, we could have a different pattern in this second bar. So I would click on this little plus sign down here, variation one, and maybe I want to change this to a new variation. So click on that new variation. Now we have variation two, and maybe I want that to be like this. I don't know. Let's hear what that sounds like. And again, if I want, I could click here and have it to be variation one and then drag this again for another bar. And maybe I want this bar to be variation two now. So click there, variation two, and you can keep creating variations if you want. 
And of course we can add more drums in here. And if you make a mistake, you can just click on it again. It goes away, click there. And maybe I just wanna keep adding these in here like that. Let's see what this sounds like. Very basic, but you can hear all the drums are hit with the same velocity. Let's click on this V here. That's up at the top over here. And this is our velocity window. So we can adjust the velocities if we want. And that gives you a little more variety to the beat. Again, just this is very basic stuff that we're doing in this video because it is the basics series. So now you know how to use the piano roll and the step clip. Plus we've also looked at recording some MIDI in. Let's now look at using a MIDI keyboard to record in. And it's basically the exact same thing like the computer keyboard. So I'm just going to create a new track. We'll call this one synth two. I'm going to click here to change the input to my mini lab three MIDI. And you can see there's a signal coming in there, but there's nothing on here yet. So I'll just add another instance of four OSC. Click there. Here's four OSC. We'll give it a different sound. I kind of want like a piano sound, but I don't know if there is one in here. Let's hear what this sounds like. All right, we'll go with that for now. And you might be wondering, how do we get Waveform to notice our MIDI keyboard? Usually with most MIDI keyboards, I've used quite a few with it, it just recognizes it. So you don't even have to do anything, but if yours isn't showing up, you can go into settings and then go to MIDI devices. And if in here, you notice your MIDI device is disabled like that, you would just click on it to enable it. And you want to make sure actually it's the one under this line because this is inputs and these are outputs here. So you want to make sure under here is enabled. If it's not, just click it, it will enable it and then you can add it over here. So we've armed this track for recording and just like before, we're going to hit record. All right, so we've just recorded using our MIDI keyboard and it's created a MIDI clip for us. If we double click on it, it brings up our piano roll and we can do all that editing stuff like we did before. Quantize, start times, we'll say nearest quarter beat. And again, it's move things. And if we didn't have that velocity window open, we could just click on that again. You can see the velocities are different when you use a MIDI keyboard because it has touch sensitive keys on there that adjust the sensitivity of whatever you're playing. And that's what I really like about using a MIDI keyboard is you get that human feel because you are a human playing human notes in there. Now that we have all of these clips in here, we might want to do a little bit of arranging, maybe some editing of clips and that sort of thing. And that's what we're going to look at in the next video. You can click here to get to that one. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, you can subscribe to the channel to continue on with these waveform tutorials, plus some other audio tech tips for audio tech TV. I'm Zane, keep creating fist bump, thumbs up.